Okay, so we're about halfway through chapter 16. So we're in chapter 16.8. Um, and the lecture notes start off with a review. And I think I stapled all of these together when I copied them for you. But you'll see they start off with um, this slide without the background, right? And so um, this is the same summary we had before. So go ahead and pause and make sure you get a chance to answer these questions. Um, and then you can check if you got them right. So Bronsted Larry acids are defined as proton donors, whereas the bases are proton acceptors. Arrhenius acids, uh, no, Arrhenius acids <laughs> make H plus in water, whereas the bases make OH minus in water. Um, you could also say H3O plus, hydronium ion. These are equivalent for us. Um, and then, of course, these are just some reminders. This, um, These reminders correlate with this chart here that shows us which are strong and which are weak. Do you know what the strong acids are? Remember, I told you in lecture, there's seven of them, and you should have them memorized. You should also know the strong bases. Um, and then, of course, we have these, these formulas, pH equals negative log of H plus, and then the opposite of that. And so when we think about this, low pH means high H plus concentration, which we would call acidic. High pH means a low hydrogen ion concentration, which we would call basic. And also, if you wanted to think about it as OH minus, a low pH means low OH minus concentration. Um, and a high pH means a high OH minus concentration. So that kind of summarizes what we learned about how um, pH is inverse for H plus, but proportional for OH minus. All right, so here we are back looking at the Haber-Bosch reaction again, because it is such an important reaction in our industry, in our world. Um, and I want to make it clear that there is a difference when you're thinking about pressures versus concentration. So all the problems we've done so far were KEQ or KC, which means we're thinking about the molarity of everything. And you can measure the molarity of a gas. That's a possible thing to do. But most of the time, it's easier to measure the pressure of a gas. So frequently when we're doing fully gas phase reactions, you're gonna get a bunch of pressures. The, the formula provided to you in your book is down here, right? So you can go from using molarities for your equilibrium constant to using pressures. When you do that, you wanna make sure the R value you're using has atmospheres in it. So that's gonna be, um, oops, hold on. this version of it. We're not working with energies, so it's not the 8.3. Um, so we'll go with this one. The T needs to be in Kelvin or it won't work out. And this delta N is about the different moles in the reaction. So remember, we were talking about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. You kind of add up the coefficients to figure out that there's four particles or moles of reactant and there's two moles of product and so when you calculate the delta n it's always the final minus initial so what i mean by that is if we started with four and ended with two the math here for that delta n is going to be final minus initial the sign is really really important don't neglect it okay so that's how you can calculate, if you know your KC, you can figure out the KP. Or if you know KP, you can rearrange this and find KC. Oh, note that when you rearrange, the delta N only applies to R and T right here. Okay. So as an example, um, if we have two and a half atmospheres of carbon dioxide, and we have 1.2 atmospheres of CO, that's carbon monoxide, and 1.3 atmospheres of oxygen. The question is asking us to calculate a Kp. So that is going to be defined by the, the reaction. We don't write brackets anymore, though, because it's not 
It's not a molarity. So instead we use P, which stands for pressure. So the pressure of the CO times the pressure of the O2 divided by the pressure of the CO2. And so here, this is just like doing the other calculations we did before. There's, uh, oh, I forgot exponents. It's a good thing I, I wrote that definition out, right? So this will be the pressure squared and this pressure is also squared. So 1.3 is not squared because that's oxygen, but 1.2 is, and so is 2.5. All right. So parentheses are your friend when you enter this in the calculator, um, or you wanna do the exponents first, write those answers down or save them in your calculator and then compute um, the, the division after that. Otherwise, what can happen is like it'll do, say, the top divided by 2.5 and square that whole answer. Okay, so the proper answer for KP, I'm going to come down here so that I got a little bit of room, is 0 0.29952. So I'm just going to, that's what our calculator says. I only really have two sig figs, so that's our answer. All right. So um, in thinking about strong acids and bases and how we can use Ka and Kb, when we say something is weak, what does that really mean, right? And so numerically what that's going to mean is that your K value is less than one, because if it was bigger than one, you'd have more products than reactants, right? Um, which would mean you're a strong acid. You, you have dissociated completely and actually equilibrium, equilibrium principles no longer apply there. Um, but not all weak acids or bases are created equally. Some of them are going to be stronger than others. And so the question is, how do we tell? And so, for example, with ammonia, if you recall, at the very beginning of the term, I told you to write a fact in your notebook pertinent to ammonia, right? So ammonia is NH3. But when it reacts with water, ammonia is a base. So according to Bronson and Lowry, that means it's going to accept a proton. So when it, it gets a proton from water, it becomes ammonium, right? So it, it took this proton and that's how we become NH4. And the plus is because protons have a positive charge. So we have something neutral, we're adding a positive charge, we get a positive charge. Now, if water donates a hydrogen, that leaves us with a hydroxide behind. So sometimes your textbook says NH3, and sometimes your, your lab textbook says NH4OH. And the reason I wrote this on the board for you to copy down into your lab notebook is because they're actually the same thing. Well, assuming it's aqueous, of course. Ammonia actually does come in a pure form. It's a gas um, stored in compressed cylinders, and we are not going to work with it. It's super dangerous. So um, anyway, this is why. We can, we can sort of mentally switch between ammonia and ammonium hydroxide. They're actually exactly the same thing because they're all present in the solution at once. And that's why the textbook switches back and forth. And that's why our labels don't always match the textbook because they, they actually are the same thing. So in terms of figuring out acid-base pairs, this is a good review. So go ahead and try that. Remember to identify acid and base on each side. So bases are the one that accept protons. Acids are the ones that donate it. Um, over here, this could not donate a proton, so that has to be a base kind of by our definition, which means this has to be the acid. And so to, to pair them up, you're going to find the acid and base on one side and match it up with the acid or base on the opposite side. I'm going to do this one in green just because. OK, so H2O. H2O's conjugate is hydroxide, and ammonia's conjugate is ammonium, right? And so that's a Lewis, I mean, sorry, that's a Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid and a base. So um, if we were thinking about the NH3 becoming NH4, plus, so that's a basic reaction. I'm going to just jot the same thing we just wrote down on the other page. So 
So if you think about this one, you are going to write a KB because it's producing or it's acting as a base, right? And so the KB here is NH4 times OH minus divided by the parent NH3. But that's not the only way that you might envision this reaction happening because there are, are equivalents. So the other thing that you might think about is reversing that, right? So if you took NH4 plus and reacted it with water, now this is going to donate to the water. So you end up with hydronium ion, which again is the same as H plus, and you get that NH3 back. In this case, the ammonium is reacting as an acid. So, because it's producing H plus, so we can write it a Ka like this. Okay, so these are the same but reversed from each other. And before we said that if you were just reversing a reaction, all you have to do um, is invert the K, right? So something like that. That's kind of true here, except that we noticed like H3O plus is present in the acidic reaction and OH minus is present in the basic. But so if we just take the overall reaction and multiply them together, we end up with, I'm going to try to keep this color coded just for clarity. We end up with the, the basic one. It's so basic. times the acidic one. And so that's a plus. It's hard to see. Sorry. And so if we look at this as sort of like a mathematical exercise, then we can see that some things are going to cancel off pretty quick. NH4 appears on both sides. NH3 appears on both sides. So what we actually get out of this equation is just hydroxide multiplied by hydronium ion, which we have seen before. So Ka times Kb is equal to hydroxide times hydronium, which we had defined before as Kw. Also, um, it's important to understand the difference because here I said, oh, well, we could just invert it, but then we look at the reactions and they're not quite identical, right? Because one produces hydroxide and one produces um, hydronium ion and those don't exist in the reactants in either of the reactions. So it's not quite a reversal. It's actually more like adding those two reactions together, which means we're going to, we're going to multiply their case together. Okay. And so when we do that, we actually learn that um, anytime you have an acid and a base reaction, the important bit is that hydroxide and hydronium are what are going to come out of that. Um, and so you'll remember too that this is always equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So the pH scale is actually based on this number. And so this is, you know, this is always at 25 degrees Celsius. It does fluctuate with temperature if you're doing really careful calculations. There are tables to show you that. But for us, we're going to kind of leave it at 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And so if I took the, the logarithms of both sides and simplified the logs, you end up with kind of this situation, right? And so you can also remember pH plus pOH equals um, 14, right? So pKW, so the negative log of KW is 14. So that's the connection. So we have this equilibrium constant of water that is universal. And when you take the log of that, you find out that it's 14. And so the maximum pH that anything can have is 14. That would be if we had no pOH value, right? So very low hydroxide concentrations. Um, so that's where those equations come from, okay?
So if we think about the Ka of ammonium is this number. And Kb of ammonia is this number. We can see if the math comes out the way we expect, right? So we just said, whoops, not P. Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. So if we take these two conjugates and we multiply them together, in theory, we should get the value of Kw. So prove it to yourself. See if it's true. And so what I get from this calculation is my calculator says 1.0008. Yeah, three zeros times 10 to the negative 14 which is, you know, basically 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So it does indeed work out. And so in Appendix D, if you look at them, you'll see there's a whole bunch of Ka's listed. They don't give you the Kb of the conjugate because you could find it, right? So actually in our textbook, ammonia is listed in the Kb chart, which is on the second page of Appendix D. And you can compute Ka when you need it, say if the problem has given you NH4 plus instead of NH3, then all you do is essentially realize that you can rearrange this equation so that you're solving for the Ka in that case. The book isn't going to give that to you in an appendix or even your final exam. You have to remember that it, it, you can just take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the base value and you get the acid value or divided by the acid value and you get the base value okay it's a very handy equation okay so here is a couple of practice problems these will be in learning check number i think we're at four now you'll just type your answer in there fill in the blank kind of question, but um, you want to show your work in case you get stuck and you need to ask for some help. 